Is it really necessary to master every piece of music we learn? You know, there are those that would say that it's vital that we do, but personally, I'm not convinced that it's necessarily a winning strategy, or certainly it's not the only winning strategy. So stay tuned and let me explain why. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit, then please do consider subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen now, and it's all done for you. There is a school of thought that says we should try to master absolutely every piece of music that we undertake. However, this is a lot easier said than done. I've played Bach's C major prelude since my teens, I would guess, or maybe even before my teens, perhaps. And to this day, is it a piece of music that I can honestly say I master? No, not really. When I play it, there'll be the odd unevenness here and there, every now and then. And sometimes, if I try to change dynamic on the moment, then I might miss a note or two. So. Following the mastery school of thought, shouldn't I keep practicing this piece of music until I've ironed out every glitch? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I think I play it nicely enough. Not perfectly by any means, but certainly nicely enough. I wouldn't be ashamed playing it in front of somebody. And certainly it's a piece that I play pretty much once a week, I guess, just because I love it so much. Therefore, I think that just focusing on this one piece would be subject to the law of diminishing returns here. Surely, by moving on, playing other things, as my ability gradually develops, then my ability to play this piece will also grow with that. You'll often read about four basic stages in the mastery of any skill. You first have unconscious incompetence, where you simply don't know that you're not doing it right. Then you have conscious incompetence, where you're still not getting it right, but now you know what it is you're doing wrong. Then you have conscious competence, where you can do it perfectly well, but it takes a great degree of effort and concentration. And then finally, unconscious competence, where you can do it pretty much without thinking. So, to which of these levels do you think we should try to get our pieces? Certainly, I don't think that the level of unconscious competence applies to any particular piece at all. Really, at that level, you're talking about total mastery of the instrument itself, which is a different thing, I think. Therefore, perhaps the best we can hope to achieve ourselves as amateur hobbyists is perhaps conscious competence. But that said, do even a really great pianist actually progress very much beyond this stage themselves? You know, none of them are thinking about something else when they're playing. When they're playing piano, they're concentrating very intently on exactly what they're doing. Okay, they're not thinking about individual notes maybe, and they're not thinking about how to move their hands but they're thinking about all of the little subtleties in the music that their level of skill allows them to bring out. You know, even the great Vladimir Horowitz said that if people wanted him to always play every piece in exactly the same way, then they would always be no perfect. But that's not the way he played. And because he would dare when he played, there was the odd wrong note here and there, and he was totally unapologetic about it. Let's have a think about the stage of conscious incompetence then. Now in this context, I'd interpret that as meaning that you can now actually play the piece, and probably quite well, but there are things that you wish you were able to do more with it. So for example, you might want to get it a little bit faster in places. You might want to get a richer, fuller tone in other places. You might want a greater range of dynamics. There's all sorts of things that you might want to be able to do, but you're conscious that your current skill level 
doesn't really permit you to get where you want to get to with it. In fact, I read in Alan Rusbridge's book, Play It Again Piano, that William Fong, who was the teacher at the summer piano camp he went to, said what categorised lots of adult pianists was that they had a very clear artistic vision of what they wanted to be able to do with a piece of music, just not necessarily always the technical skills to be able to achieve that vision. Thinking then about unconscious incompetence, now of course, we all sort of know what we can't play, so we're never necessarily unconsciously incompetent in that sense. However, perhaps we're trying to approach a piece that we just don't know how to approach, and we try to brute force it through. You know, as Einstein famously said, the definition of insanity is to keep repeating the same action and then expect a different result. So what happens is we haven't really put in the work to find out what's wrong and we end up just playing it through sloppily thinking, oh well, that's good enough. My view really is that we should probably be aiming to get our pieces to a level of conscious incompetence and that's for a few reasons. You know, as I mentioned with that prelude of Bach earlier, if I was to fixate on just trying to completely master that, then not only do we have the law of diminishing returns that starts to apply, but the marginal improvements that I would make would probably not really merit the effort that goes into them. And then secondly, we need to be prepared to put pieces to one side and come back to them later. When we do this, of course, in theory, our playing will have improved over the intervening time, and then we can start attacking some of those little niggles in a better way. This is something I've done a lot with Chopin's C-sharp minor waltz. You know, it's something that I think I first learned back in 2016, and every three, four, six months maybe sometimes, I'll come back to it and I'll work on the specific areas that I want to improve. You know, I think I can play this waltz fairly well now. I'm no Yu Wang, certainly I'm not. But when I play it, people generally enjoy listening to it. But I also know that it's not as good as I can get it or that it's possible to play. And therefore, letting my playing naturally evolve over a few months and then coming back and trying to fix some of the trickier areas works really well for me. And then thirdly, I think that variety is very important in practicing also. You know, if you were only stuck on trying to fix one or two little things, then eventually your brain is just gonna start switching off and you'll be doing more or less mindless repetitions of stuff that don't add an awful lot of value. Rather, working on a variety of different things at different points in time gives you different challenges to try and overcome and keeps your brain actively engaged whilst you're practicing. Of course, in the fullness of time, I'm sure we'd all like to get to the conscious competence stage or maybe even the unconscious competence stage. I know certainly that I do. However, perhaps the best way to get there isn't just by trying to apply it to every single piece we learn. Rather, to play a variety of different things, learn a variety of different things, get them to a point that we're pleased with them, then put them to one side, move on to something else, knowing that we can then come back to them later, better prepared to make them even better. In any event, there's so much absolutely beautiful music around that we're never gonna really run out of things to learn, are we? If you're not already, then please don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.